Hey guys and welcome! In today's video I want to point out some important changes that were made with update 3.1 in Battlefield 2042 and that you should definitely know about. In addition I also included some changes that will be made with the next update and some cosmetic leaks for the upcoming mid-season event. But these topics will be coming at the end of the video. First we're gonna have a look at the changes. And one of these is the dynamic change of zoom radius for the minimap. This means while you are in the game, you can not only open the full map, but also zoom the minimap in and out. For this new mechanic, there were new keybinds added and also new settings in the option. And this one is called default minimap view distance and you can find it on your display and then minimap. It can be set to auto, close, medium or far and the difference here is that when it's set to auto, the minimap zoom will change depending if you are on foot, in a vehicle or in an aircraft and then uses the values you have set below. So that's how it also worked before the update. But what's new is that if you set it to close, medium or far, the minimap zoom will always be the same no matter if you are on foot or in a vehicle. So if you prefer the same zoom no matter what you do, you can set this now. But what you can also do is to dynamically switch between all of these options while you are in the game and that's what the new keybind is for. On PC you need to press N to do this and on console you need to tap select or the touchpad. To open the full map you need to hold the respective button now. So in case you thought opening the full map behaves strange now, this is the reason. But what I also recognized with this mechanic is that there seems to be a little bug or issue on consoles, at least I had this problem. While it was working perfectly fine on PC right from the start, no matter if I was using mouse and keyboard or controller, on console it caused me some trouble. Cause when I was tapping the assigned button, the game did still open the full map for a short moment and the zoom of the minimap did not change. And only when holding the button, the zoom changed, but the game also opened the full map. So it was all a bit messed up. And in case this is happening to you as well, here's what you need to do to fix it. Just go to Options and then Controller, choose Edit Controller Mapping and then right in the first tab, unbind the key for full map. Then you will be able to use the new mechanic as intended and everything will work in the way I described it before. Tap the button to change the zoom stages and hold it to open the full map. Pretty useful once it works and you got used to it. What was also added and what I like a lot to be honest are the new blood mist elements that appear when shooting at the body of an enemy. Before the update this was only visible for headshots but now it's also for body shots. Not only helpful because you can clearly see if you hit an enemy but it also looks pretty cool and adds to the immersion. Another newly added mechanic that is a bit more helpful for earning XP is the Request Fulfilled event. It gets triggered when you revive an ally who has requested this revive before. So if their revive icon was filled and you heard this ping sound, then they had requested it. When you go for the revive, you receive an additional 5 XP. Not much, but at least a little something for all the hardworking medics out there that keep us alive. If you love to play Rush, you can now also earn more XP for destroying an MCOM cause this was increased from 150 to 300. And we also got two new world lock messages, one for vehicle repairs and one for Angel's ammo resupply. World logs are the messages shown on the left hand side of the screen that says who revived or healed you or who requested a revive and so on. And here you can now see who is repairing your vehicle and who resupplies you with ammo in case it comes from Angel's resupply bag or crate. But especially for the vehicle this is pretty helpful since it's a lot easier to tell if someone is repairing you or not. And you can try to keep an eye on them and cover them with smoke for example. This message has been in the game before but was then removed for some reason but now has returned. What was also added but might not be very recognizable is the projectile sound for the XM37 airburst rifle. Before the update the shells were silent while traveling through the air and now they can be heard. This might not help you much when you are on the fire of the launcher but it adds a sound effect that seemed to be missing at the start of the season. Could be a bit louder in my opinion so you would have more chance to react to it but at least it helps to pin down the direction. What's also pretty cool and was sent to me by Sven on Twitter is that Ranger also triggers Sane's trade. So when Sane has received damage and Robot Dog is doing a kill, it will trigger the faster healing for the specialist just like any normal kill would do. This was probably not added with the update and was in the game since the start of the season but I haven't recognized it before and also didn't mention it of course. So I thought it was the perfect chance to include it here. 
And then there is the fire rate of the MP412 Rex and the AKS74U. This was too low before the update and was now adjusted to the values they should have had right from the start. For the Rex this means an increase from 245 to 255 and for the AKS it was 600 before and is now at 650. On the Rex this might not be noticeable but on the AKS it definitely is and makes the weapon a lot better. And then there are also good news for everyone who's frequently playing solo matches against AI, whether it be to warm up, to unlock weapons and attachments or simply for a chill round, cause the XP you can earn during these games was increased. First of all, the ribbons were enabled for it, but only at 40% of the normal value and the general XP cap was doubled. I believe the cap before the update was at 300 XP per minute, so it should now be at 600, but to balance this out, the XP given for each action was reduced to only 50%. So with single actions you earn less XP now, but you can earn more XP per minute. That means if you do enough actions per minute, you can now definitely earn more XP per match. Not so good news on the other hand for everyone who was trying to be creative in completing the weekly missions, especially the ones where you had to repair damages, cause since the update it's not possible anymore to progress on missions simply by damaging and repairing your own gadgets. So if you used to do this, like damaging Boris turret and then repairing it, this does not count anymore. And the last change that came in with the update is that the active protection system that is available for the EBLC RAM and EMKV90 no longer blocks damage from C5 or AT mines. Everything else will still get blocked. But what will also be done here is that the system will be added to more tanks besides the two that have it today. And that's what we learned in the last development blog that was all about vehicles and how they will be changed in the future. So the two tanks that will receive the protection system next are the M1A5 and the T28. Once it is in the game it can be unlocked and equipped for both of them. And there will also be massive changes made to the turret speed of almost all tanks. Depending on the type and the setup of the vehicle, this will be increased by up to 140%, so the turrets will turn a lot faster then. Dice felt like they were too sluggish compared to the overall pace of the game, so they have to be increased. If this will be a good change or not remains to be seen, but I have the feeling that they will do a lot more adjustments until this is completely balanced out. And then there are two more mechanics that will be introduced to the game with the next update in January and that's something called Below Radar and a new height limit for helicopters. Below Radar means that when a pilot is flying an aircraft below 30 meters from the ground, they will be immune to all lock-ons from vehicle-based weapons but not from infantry lock-ons. So if you take the risk to fly this low for a bombing run for example, you won't have to fear the lock-on of a wildcat anymore, but a soldier with an FXM launcher would still be able to lock on to you. Same if the lock-on is already active before you go below 30 meters. The low altitude won't break the lock-on. And the change to the height limit means that the maximum altitude at which helicopters can fly will be lowered. So it should not be possible anymore to stay on the highest altitude and still drop bombs on objectives while no one and nothing is able to lock onto the heli. This was not a massive problem but it was always a bit annoying when it happened and then there was no chance to reach the heli with RAW or LIS rockets or anything else. Jet planes however are not included in this and they also do not have an altitude limit in general. And at the end, just a quick look at some unreleased cosmetic sets that will be coming to the game in the near future and that Temporial has found in the latest patch files again. This one for McKay, I don't know, looks a bit like he just came out of cryosleep and is looking for a haircut now, even though the uniform itself looks pretty nice, but the other 8 sets are all connected to the new mid-season event. And this will most likely be called Black Storm, cause that's the name of this unit here. And all 4 sets have the names of the 4 horsemen of the apocalypse, so it might get pretty dark with the new event. Standing against them, at least when it comes to the lore, would be the Nordwick Control Core, but these are also not looking much brighter, at least not compared to the white liquid at the skins of the last event. When the new event will start is not known yet, but I assume it will be either next week or the week after. And that's it for today, I hope you found this video interesting and helpful and if you did, be sure to drop a like or a comment below and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content like this. Until then, thanks for watching, I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.